Welcome! Let's talk about directives, also known as attribute directives, also known as decorating directives. It's a mechanism for adding functionality to existing components or existing plain HTML elements. Components are so powerful that we tend to use them for almost everything, but we should always be on the lookout for the possibility of extracting certain functionality from components into attribute directives. This will make that functionality much more reusable. For example, take a look at this tab container component. We're going to implement it not as a component, but as a series of free intercommunicating directives. This is our starting point, a plain HTML page with no functionality. As you can see, when we click, nothing happens and all three tabs are shown. We are going to make the tab panel functionality generic by saying that inside a certain part of the page delimited by the show one container attribute directive, there are several elements decorated with the show one directive that are only visible one at a time. Each one has an ID. Which one is visible? That is determined by the visible property of these show one elements and we can switch which element is visible when we click in an element decorated with the show one trigger attribute directive. We are going to identify which show one element is active and which show one trigger element is active using the active property on each. Under the form of directives, this functionality becomes a lot more reusable. We can take it and apply it to other components, such as, for example, a wizard, where the same situation occurs. We only want to display one element at a time, the wizard panel, and we want to be able to trigger activation based on previous and next buttons. First, let's implement the show one trigger directive, which takes as an input an ID, Superman, Batman or Flash, and an optional active flag. Let's pass in the ID using at input and let's bind it to the show one trigger attribute property. Let's also pass the optional flag, giving it a default value of false. Directives can interact with the element on which they are applied, and this is known as their host element. In this case, we want to add a click listener to the host element of show and trigger. We're going to use the at host listener annotation for that. In this case, let's just log to the console whenever a click occurs. Now let's see this in action. If we open the console and we click, in one of the tab buttons, we can see that hello world is being logged to the console. Now the show one trigger directive needs to interact with the show one container directive. Whenever the click occurs, we want to notify the container that another show one should be displayed. For that, let's inject the show one container directive in the constructor of show one trigger. This should only be done if the two directives are tightly coupled, which is the case here. The trigger directive needs to register itself with the container. One way of doing it is to make a call to the container here in the constructor. Let's implement the add method. We are simply going to push the trigger into an array of triggers. A better way of doing this will be shown in a moment. Let's now implement the functionality of showing a tab panel when a tab button is clicked. What we want to do is notify the show one container that if the trigger with ID Batman is clicked, then the show when element with ID Batman should be shown. We can see here TypeScript helping us out. Show one container is not a show one trigger property. That's because we injected it in the constructor, but we did not assign it to a property. Let's do that and also mark it as private using the private keyword. To implement the show functionality, the show one container needs to have a reference to its show one children. For that, let's inject them here directly using at content children. 
The query list is dynamic, meaning that unlike the case of manually populating the triggers array, this list will be kept up to date. If a new show1 element is added to the page, that will eventually be reflected back to the list. In order to implement show, let's loop through the items on the list. We are going to set the item with the ID that we just clicked as active and the other ones as inactive. Let's add the ID property to the show1 directive. We can see here in the HTML that it's being passed using the show1 property. So let's use at input to link the show1 HTML property to the ID controller property. Let's now show or hide the panel to the user depending on the value of its active property. To implement this, we are going to use the hidden DOM property. Check the lesson on ng-if to understand why it would be better to implement this by completely adding or removing the whole panel from the DOM. Let's use the host binding annotation to write to the hidden DOM property of the host element. So the hidden property will be true if the active flag is false, as we can see here in this getter. Notice that we need to use the string hidden in the host binding annotation to specify that the output of this method should be written to the hidden host DOM property. This is not done automatically based on the name of the method. Let's see what we have so far. As you can see, only the active panel is being shown. And when we click on the tab button, the corresponding panel gets displayed. Let's now mark the active tab button as active. For that, we're going to use the host binding annotation to add the selected class to the host element if the flag active is set to true. We can now see the Superman tab button marked as active with a white background. But when we click on the other tab buttons, they do not get marked as active. Let's implement this final feature of our tab container. What we want to do is, whenever show is called, we want to loop also over the triggers and mark the one with the ID that was just clicked as active and the others as inactive. We have now a working tab container. As we can see, the directive's functionality, just like components, is extremely powerful. Let's keep this in mind while building our components and search for opportunities to extract functionality into directives where it can be reused across multiple components.